Hello and welcome to the Bible Way Church of Atlas Road. My name is Sierra Artemis and we're so glad you chose to worship with us. If you haven't already, please be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can stream our worship services live through our website at bwcar.org or through our Facebook page at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. on Sundays and 7 p.m. on Tuesdays. For previously recorded sermons, you can tune in on Sundays by way of radio. That's 10 a.m. on WWDM 101.3 FM and 7 p.m. on WFMV, now located on 96.1 FM. Don't forget, you can check us out on YouTube at Bible Way Church of Atlas Road. Remember to subscribe and turn on your notifications. We want to hear from you. We will be conducting an online survey to see what you think about returning to in-person worship. Be on the lookout for an email or a phone call so that you can share your feedback with us. Bible Way Church of Atlas Road will be hosting an online graduation service. If you're a high school graduate and would like to be a part of this virtual experience, send your full name, name of your high school, along with your email address to wired at bwcar.org. June is Men's Month at Bible Way Church of Atlas Road. Though we're still social distancing, we invite all men to join us Thursdays and Saturdays by way of phone as we pray and discuss topics related to today's Christian man. This year's project will be restocking the church pantry with non-perishable food. These contributions will help our social action ministry to meet the needs of the community. All men are invited to join an over-the-phone conference about becoming the Christian man, Thursday, June 4th, 11th, and 18th. You can join by dialing 1-508-924-1141. Join the men's ministry for an online morning prayer, Saturdays, June 6th, 13th, and 27th. The lineup includes our men's ministry leader, Jeffrey Scott, on June 6th, our deacon's chairman, Deacon Calvin Chip Jackson, on June 13th, and associate pastor Alva Lawson on June 27th. Men can join by calling 1508-924-1141. Parents, we want you to know that your little ones can virtually attend our live Sunday school lessons. You can receive them via email. Just go through our website at bwcar.org and complete the Stay Connected With Us form. Bible Way Church of Atlas Road will be distributing food for those in need on Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Deliveries will be free for seniors ages 65 years and older within a 10-mile radius of the church. Deliveries will be available on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Call 1-888-776-1238 to schedule a pickup or delivery. In these times, prayer is needed more than ever. Redeeming the Time prayer line will be open each Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. That number is 1425-436-6302. Enter the access code 782-443. There are many safe, secure, and easy ways to give to Bible Way Church of Atlas Road. Online giving is available to members and guests through my connections at bwcar.org. You can choose to give through your bank, checking, debit, or savings account, or via our mobile giving app by texting BWCAR along with your giving amount to 73256. You can mail your check to P.O. Box 90309, Columbia, South Carolina, 29290. Please do not mail cash. Financial donations will be accepted at the church on Tuesdays from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. If you need help finding financial support and care options for seniors, Caring.com has information that can help you navigate resources. If you need assistance finding food, paying housing bills, or other essential services, call United Way by dialing 211 and entering your zip code for a list of agencies. For accurate and up-to-date information regarding the coronavirus, contact DHEC and the CDC. We can all help stop the spread of germs and prevent the spread of respiratory viruses like COVID-19 and the flu. Wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Avoid touching your face with unwashed hands. Avoid skin-to-skin -skin contact with other people. Stay home and away from others while you're sick. Cover your mouth and nose when coughing or sneezing. And finally, clean frequently touched objects and surfaces. For more information, visit scdheck.gov slash COVID-19. 
We want to thank you for your continued financial support to the ministry of Bible Way Church of Atlas Road. We want to be sure that those that are able to give know how to do so, so we set up a step-by-step -step tutorial. Here are the following ways you can give. Online through My Connections via our website, bwcar.org. So you'll type that into your browser. Scroll down, click on the Give Online icon. Type in the amount that you would like to give. Then click to the right of your giving amount to select where you would like to give. Enter your email address for your receipt and click continue. You can continue to give as a guest or you can log in and create an account. Once you've decided, fill out your payment details and click give when you're done. You can text BWCAR along with your giving amount to 73256. Wait for a response and click the link. Once you've clicked the link, fill out your payment information, then click the icon Give along with your giving amount. You can also send a recurring payment through automatic draft with your bank or My Connections. To access My Connections, type bwcar.org into your web browser. Click on the top tab or scroll down to the very bottom of the page and click on My Connections. You can sign in or continue as a guest. If you would like to create an account, it's easy. Click on the icon that says Get Started with My Connections. Look for Need a Login. Select the link that says Click Here. Type in your email address, your first name and your last name. You may have to confirm your username in your email. Once you've signed in, you can select Manage Schedule Giving under the My Giving Summary and follow the instructions to schedule your recurring payment. You can also send a check via mail to Bible Way Church of Atlas Road, Accounts Receivable, P.O. Box 90309, Columbia, South Carolina. That zip code is 29290. Please do not mail cash. Scripture says, O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. And then there's another scripture that says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Good morning and welcome to our live virtual services here at the Bible Way Church of Atlas Road. Thank you so much for joining us and we hope that our services will be a blessing for you and your family. We're sharing these live services from our worship center, 2440 Atlas Road here in Columbia, South Carolina. If you're viewing us through our live website, thank you so much. We ask that you feel free to leave your comments. If you're viewing us through Facebook Live, we ask that you invite your Facebook friends, start a watch party, and also feel free to leave your comments. If you need prayer, you can dial one 888-776-1238 or email us on the prayer request email that you see on your screens. We are praying for so many of our church members, many of you that are viewing. Perhaps you're viewing for the first time and you're feeling a little discouraged. Perhaps you've been sick. We're praying for you also. And as we also say, if you can't get to us, God can get to you. Just remember, he sees you knows about you 
He cares about you and loves you, so reach out and touch him by faith. He's yours just for the asking. We ask that you join us in our corporate prayer on this morning. Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to be here. God, we thank you because your word declares in everything give thanks, but this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. We thank you, God, how you blessed us to be up early this morning. We thank you how you provided traveling mercies for us, God, over the dangerous highways. We thank you for bringing us back together one more time for worship. Now, God, we ask that you bless those that are viewing. We are praying for their experiences right now. Perhaps someone is not saved. We ask that you save them right now. Perhaps someone is sick. We ask that you heal bodies. Maybe somebody is just a little discouraged. We believe these virtual services, God, will encourage them. We pray, God, for our praise and worship experience. We pray for the word of God. We ask that you continue to anoint our pastor. But most of all, God, we ask that you save souls. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's children said amen. At this time, we'll turn our praise and worship portion of the services into the hands of our praise team leader, Elder William Bill Lord. Thank you, Pastor Mac. Good morning and bless the Lord, everybody. So good to be back into the house of the Lord. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For this purpose, guess where the house of God is? God lives in you. So you are, you represent the church of Christ. He lives in you. So I'm glad this morning that God is visiting us this morning. He's living with us this morning and he abides with us today. So much going on in the world so much so much going on but guess what god is still in control and guess what the blood still works guess what there's still power in the blood old saints of old used to say plead the blood i plead the blood i dare you this morning to just go pleading the blood over your own personal situation plead the blood over our earth this morning plead the blood over our nation plead the blood over our peacekeeping officials plead the blood over your finances whatever it is i dare you to let the blood do the work let the blood go to work on your situation this morning as we get ready to celebrate the sacrament of communion today we've come to let you know that there's power somebody help me say power in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Power in the blood. Power in the blood. There's power in the blood. Blood. If you believe it, come on, help us say power in the blood. Power in yes, sir. The blood. Come on, girls, help me say power. Power in, power in the blood. The blood. In the blood of Jesus. Power in, power in the blood. Power in the blood. Thank you, Jesus. Not only is there power, take it up and say, healing in the blood. Healing in the blood. Healing in the blood of Jesus. Healing in the blood. Come on, y'all, with authority, say healing. Healing in the blood. Thank you, Jesus. My Bible says, who the sun sets free is free indeed. Freedom in the blood. Freedom in the blood. Freedom in the blood, y'all. In the blood. If you're feeling that power, come on, help me see power. Power. Woo. Yes, sir. 
God praise this power in the blood there is healing in the blood amen it's just something about the blood the hymn says what shall wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus thank you to Elder Bill and our praise team and now we're going into our offertory appeal like to thank you for your continuous financial support to the ministry of Bible Way Church of Atlas Road. It's offering time and here are the following ways that you can give. There are many safe, secure, and easy ways to give to Bible Way Church of Atlas Road. Online giving is available to members and guests through my connections at bwcar.org. You can choose to give through your bank, checking, debit, or savings account, or via our mobile giving app by texting BWCAR along with your giving amount to 73256. You can mail your check to P.O. Box 90309. 
Columbia, South Carolina, 29290. Please do not mail cash. Financial donations will be accepted at the church on Tuesday from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Our mission statement here at the Bible Way Church of Atlas Road is to know God, to love, and to serve. We'd like to thank all of our viewers for tuning in, especially our first-time viewers. If you haven't already, please be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to share with your family and friends. Thank you so much for giving to the ministry here at the Bible Way Church, and thank you for your faithfulness. As we often say, God blesses the cheerful giver. Let us pray over our offering. Father, we thank you for those that have purpose in their heart, God, that they're going to give. We thank you for their faithfulness. We thank you for their dedication. Now, God, we ask that you bless them. Some are giving God and they don't know what the next meal will be. Some giving God and they don't know how they're going to pay that next bill. But we believe you, God, and we know that it shall be returned some 100, 200, and 300 fold. Bless them, bless those that desire to give and don't have. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's children said, Amen. It's now time for the word of God. Amen. Our pastor is going to continue the sermon series, God's Stimulus Package. But before he come, our praise team is coming with a sermonic selection, and it says we offer God our praise. David said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within him. Bless his holy name. Sister Marsha Jackson, our praise team is coming with we offer praise in the word of God from our senior pastor. we give you all the praise and all the glory yes Lord we offer praise to you hallelujah yes Lord
as your mercy toward us. Lord, we give you all the glory. Yes, Lord, you've been so good, Lord. Oh, you've been a provider toward us. reminded of the words that David writes in that iconic psalm, Psalm 23, perhaps the most famous of all biblical scriptures. But David writes, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And then Jeremiah the prophet writes in the book of Lamentations, it is of the Lord's mercies that we have not been consumed. His compassion faileth not. It is renewed every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy. If there are no other reasons you must praise God, you ought to praise God 
for goodness and mercy. Not a house, not a job, not a husband, not money in the bank, but goodness and mercy. It is of God's mercies that we are still here today. And we say thank you, Lord. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you this day. We thank you for reminding us that it is of your mercies that we've not been consumed. Thank you for goodness. Thank you for those companions that follow us, as David says, all the days of our lives. And we say thank you. We praise you for no other reason than the fact that you are good and you're good all the time. Thank you for your mercy. Mercy that looked beyond our faults and saw our needs. And now, Lord, we bless you. Bless this word. We thank you for the privilege of hearing your word. We're so grateful for so many that are joining us in worship. We send the word out to those who are distressed, those who are lonely, hurt, those who are sick, those who are shut in. Have your way, Lord. Move in a mighty way. For this is our prayer. In your name we pray and give thanks. And all the worshipers, come on and say amen. amen. Join the praise team and worship God. <coughs> come on, everybody. Praise God wherever you are. <laughs> you ought to say thank God for goodness. Thank God for his mercy. If it had not been for the goodness and the mercy of God, none of us would be here today. It is because of the Lord's mercies that we have not been consumed. And God is good all the time. David writes, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. We've got a reason to praise God. We can thank God for his goodness and his mercy. This morning we want uh, to invite you to a reference of Holy Scripture as we continue. In fact, as we conclude the series, God's Stimulus Package. God's Stimulus Package. This is the seventh and final message in this series. We began on April the 19th with a message entitled, When You Go Through. Then we shared several other messages. When you pray, when your back is against the wall, when you trust in the Lord, your God. When you wait on the Lord. <laughs> And then this one called, When You Call on the Lord. This is the seventh and the final message in this series. The text is found in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through verse 11 from the New International Version. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through through verse 11, the New International Version, this seventh message of our series. Amen. Listen to the word that is found in 1 Peter 
the fifth chapter, beginning at the sixth verse, Peter writes these words, reading from the New International Version. He writes, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Verse number seven, cast all your anxieties on him. The King James says, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Verse number eight, be alert and sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, listen to this, my brothers and sisters. Your enemy, the devil, the only enemy you have is the devil. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. Verse 10, and the God of all grace, listen to this, this is where subject for this message is found. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, listen to this next clause. After you have suffered a little while, <laughs> I want to read that again. After you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. And verse number 11, to him be the power forever and ever. Amen. We ask God's blessings on those who've heard his word. We want to speak to you this morning in this seventh and final message from the series, God's Stimulus Package. We want to talk to you this morning from the subject, when this is over. When this is over. Throughout this series for the last six messages, we have compared a secular, a governmental stimulus package to that of one which God sends us. The government provides a stimulus package when the economy is in trouble, when the economy's back is against the wall. The purpose is to interject stimulus into the economy, to stimulate the economy to keep it from collapsing. It is, and this is so important, a stimulus package. And I heard someone say this as they were debating this in Congress. They said, it is not a handout, it is an investment. It is not only an investment into where we are now, it is an investment into the future. And I thought about it. And I say, God, it is the same with you, if not even greater. God's stimulus package is spiritual. It is not economic stimulus. It is not a business stimulus. It is a spiritual stimulus that God sends to us when our backs are against the wall. When we're going through a spiritual spiritual dry place, when we feel as if we are about to give up. God sends his word, his word that will never return unto him void, his word that will lift up our spirits, his word that will turn our situation around. And that is what he's done throughout this series. He's given us messages to encourage us, messages to tell us that despite what may be going on around us, we can make it. 
And now we arrive to this seventh and final message. This one is somewhat different. It is also to stimulate us, but to encourage us and tell us that when this is over, when the crisis is over, something good can happen in your life. Listen, we are going through an unprecedented time in the history of this country. Not only are we dealing with a pandemic, but we are dealing with social unrest, and rightly so. Uh, we have people who are justifiably protesting and marching in the streets uh, for basic civil rights. Yes, black lives do matter. And it's important, and I commend them. I commend a wide variety of people, not just young blacks, but whites and others, those from different religions have come together to say that we're in the midst of a crisis. We are in a crisis doing a crisis because the original crisis of 2020 was this pandemic, this, this unparalleled worldwide pandemic in which even in this country alone, we are approaching almost two million people that have been impacted, that have been infected with this COVID-19 virus. When we think of over 110 people in America, 110,000 people in America alone that have lost their lives. Just on yesterday, yesterday on the 4th of June in Columbia, South Carolina, we had the highest total ever of over 512 new cases. And so we're in the midst of a crisis doing a crisis. But yet, here's the good news. The good news is one day this will be over. <laughs> one day uh, this will pass. The old song said this too will pass. And as it passed, we have begun the discussions of how will we be? How will we come out of this? There was a song that the old church used to sing, Brother Bill, called How Did You Feel When You Came Out of the Wilderness? In other words, we are coming out of it, but how will we come out of it? How will we reopen? We are discussing communities all over the country are discussing how shall we reopen? How shall we reacclimate ourselves? But my question to us is this, will we become as a result of what we are going through, not only with the pandemic, but even with the social crisis, will we be bitter or will we be better? Will we be jaded or will we be thankful? Will our faith become weaker or will our faith become stronger? These are things that we would have to answer ourselves. At the end of all of this, are we going to be better? Are we going to be able to say, Lord, I did not want to go through it, but what could have been my demise in fact, help me become a better person. Will we be thankful or will we be jaded? Will our faith be even stronger? <laughs> will we be able to say, you know, I've gone through this. I can go through anything. Will we come out weaker? Listen, it is said that a crisis can present an unexpected opportunity for something transformational to occur in our lives. Think about this. A crisis can present us with an unexpected, wonderful opportunity for something good, for something transformational to occur in our lives. Listen, sometimes, please hear this, Sometimes hardships 
and struggles are a part of God's plans to help us to become the person we were created to be. I was just talking to someone just the other day whose relationship is in trouble and they feel so bad. And they were saying to me, Pastor Jackson, I just don't know if I can make it at this stage of my life. What am I going to do? I say, have you ever thought about how this can be the next thing you need in your life to take you to the next place that God has for you in your life? See, we look at hardships and struggles as adversities. God says they're opportunities. For the psalmist writes in Psalms 119 and verse 71, it was good for me to be afflicted so that I may learn your ways. In other words, David said, Lord, it was good for me that I suffered, that I went through what I went through because I became stronger. I learned your decrees. I learned who uh, you are, unlike I've never known before. It is good to go through some of the things we go through. And so perhaps we ought to look at adversities from a different perspective, not from this is gonna take me out, but in fact, this may take you up. This may be the best thing that ever happened to you. Oh, he's left me. I don't know what I'm going to do. And God says, I needed to clear some garbage out of your life. I needed to clear a pathway in your life so that you can get what God has for you. Listen, there's a wonderful quote. The late President John F. Kennedy is quoted as saying, you've heard this expression all the time, but President uh, Kennedy put it in one of his speech as it relates to opportunities in the midst of a crisis. Uh, there's a symbol in the Chinese language uh, for crisis, and it is a combination of danger and opportunity. Here's what President John F., the late President John F. Kennedy says, he says, and I quote, written in Chinese, the word crisis is composed, listen to this, of two characters. One that represents danger and the other that represents opportunity. My question to us is why do we focus so much on the danger and we miss out on the opportunity? God says, I've sent you a crisis to provide you with an opportunity. It was Joseph who said to his brothers at the end of that experience, having sold him into slavery, Joseph being in prison, went through so much at age 17, placed in a dungeon. And now his brothers see him and Joseph is the governor of Egypt sitting next to Pharaoh, second in command in all of Egypt. His brothers fall down and worship him. And Joseph tells him in Genesis chapter 50, he says, I am not God. Get up and worship God for what you meant for evil. God intended it for my good so that I can save many people. Yes, sometimes God says, I'll take the crisis in your life and I'll use it as the best thing that ever happened to you. So the question, my brothers and sisters this morning, is this. You're in the midst of a crisis. We all are. We are going through social upheaval. We are all protesting uh, for justice. We are all calling for better days. We're in the midst of a global pandemic in which hundreds of thousands of people are losing their lives all over the world. But God told me to come by here this day. God asked me to ask this question, what happens when it's over? <laughs> After this, will we seize the opportunity and allow something good 
to come out of this. I don't know. Maybe there are personal crises that you're going through in your life. But my question to you is when it's over, because this too will pass. Will you say as David, it was intended for my harm, but it ended up blessing me like nothing before. What will you be when it's over? <laughs> will you be a greater praiser? Will, when you come back to church and when things have gotten back to a sense of normalcy, will you never take your praise for granted? Will you say to God, I cherish every day I live. This respiratory virus that we are dealing with, perhaps it makes us cherish every breath. There's a message that I'm working on, uh, Mag, right now for the month of July entitled, Every Breath Matters. Because the text says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. When you're about to lose it <laughs> and you struggle to breathe, every breath matters. The question is, will we cherish that? Will we stop complaining? Will we stop mourning? Will we stop talking about how bad things are? I went through this, I've lost my job, I've done this and that. Or will you say, Lord, I thank you because I am still alive. And I know that you've got something good that's coming out of this. Listen, perhaps the answer to this question is found in today's text. The answer for this question is found in the text that we've chosen for this message. The Apostle Peter writes this brief but powerful epistle. You know Peter. Peter, the one that Jesus had chose to lead the New Testament church. Peter is the one that Jesus gives this powerful word. Upon this rock I will build my church. The gates of hell should not prevail against it. Peter, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom and whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. So Peter writes this brief yet powerful epistle during a very significant time in the history of the New Testament church. It is believed that it is written in AD 64. Why is that so important? It is during the time in which this horrific persecution of the church on the Emperor Nero was just beginning and revving up. It was becoming very, very dangerous. In fact, there are some scholars that would tell you that the Apostle Paul lost his life somewhere around this time. Peter, a disciple, writes to New Testament believers, believers who weren't coming to church because it was fashionable, they were not worshiping God because it was a cool thing to do. They weren't seeing uh, how many unique views they can get. They weren't so concerned about who had the biggest house church, which one of us would be the greatest speaker, who can get our name in lights, who, who is the most famous of all of us. They were worshiping God because they loved God and it was rough. It was a trial and temptation. It was persecution from every end. Peter writes this epistle. Peter was not a man of many written words. He wasn't a, a, a literary a genius like Paul was. He wasn't uh, great in shaping his words like perhaps the apostle John when he writes, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. Peter's words were carefully chosen and they were very obvious and very transparent. He, he wrote directly as he lived his life. And so he writes this epistle to the New Testament believers. And he says to them as they are prepared for the persecution that was awaiting them. As they were even going through what they were going through. He refers, listen to this, this is so uh, revealing. 16 times in five chapters, he uses the word suffering. 16 times in five chapters, five brief chapters, 
he uses the word suffering. In other words, he wanted them to know that they would go through something, that they would have severe suffering in their life. But if they were to remain faithful, God would be right there to pick them up. Peter talked about their suffering, but not only that, he also speaks of their hope in Christ Jesus. Talks about it being a crisis, it being dangerous, but he also talks about there's an opportunity. There's an opportunity for you to get a closer relationship with the Lord than perhaps you ever had before. And so he talks about their suffering and all the things they would go through. Listen, in verse number six, Peter writes that if they would humble themselves under God's mighty hand, that he will lift them up in due time. Woo. Listen to what Peter writes to these suffering believers. Says to them that even in the midst of what you're going through, you've got to be humble. You've got to humble yourselves uh, under God's hand. Submit yourself to God. There are times in our lives in which we've tried to fix our situation. We've gone to others thinking that they were great enough to fix our situation. But we've only come to realize that if we're going to make it, it is because we submit ourselves to the Lord. Peter says, humble yourself. You don't want God to humble you. I, and I've heard the song, humble me, Lord. You really don't want that. God says, I expect you to humble yourself. I said on Tuesday night, this Tuesday night, uh, we often talking about the antidote, what is needed in order to make it through what we are going through. And God says in Second Chronicles of my people who are called by my name, the first thing he says, if they would humble themselves. This is what Peter says. We've got to walk humbly but we, in a way and in humility before the Lord. And then he goes on uh, in verse number seven to talk about how they should handle their anxieties, how they should handle all of their frustrations of what they are going through. Peter writes these words, cast all your anxiety on him. Cast all your cares on him. Why? Because he cares for you. If you're going to make it, if you're going to survive this, then you've got to take all your problems and give it to the Lord. You have to have an altar at your house. If there's anything this pandemic has taught us is that we can't wait until we come to church to lay our burdens at the altar. We've got to be able to lay them at the altar no matter where we are. Peter says, cast them all on the Lord. Why? Because he cares for us. And then Peter goes on in this text, chapter five of 1 Peter, verses eight and nine. He talks about something. He tells us in verse eight to be alert and of sober mind. Then he says something, your enemy, the devil. <laughs> and I said that as we introduced the text, the only enemy we have is the devil. <laughs> no one else is flesh and blood we do not wrestle against. But the only enemy we have is the devil. Peter makes it clear. Now, you've got to understand, AD 64, Nero was a terror. Nero was sewing people up in animal skin, putting them in the arena, watching wild animals devour their bodies. Nero chopping heads off as he did the apostle Paul. But through all of this, Peter writes in verse eight again, your enemy is the devil. It is not Nero. It is the devil. Let me tell you something to all of the wonderful brothers and sisters that are protesting for a justifiable cause. Our enemy does not reside in the White House. 
Okay. Uh, the enemy we fight against uh, is greater than flesh and blood uh, because there will always be evil people. There will always be people who would do atrocious things. Uh, but we wrestle against the spirit that influences them. Your enemy is not the person that's trying to destroy you. It is the spirit that exists. And so Peter writes, your enemy, the devil, he walks around, he prowls around like a roaring lion seeking for someone he can devour. Uh, what does God say? The Lord is saying to us through Peter that the enemy wants to keep you in a perpetual state of crisis in your mind. Please don't miss this because when the pandemic is over, even when we gain civil rights, greater rights, uh, in our mind, we are still in a perpetual state of crisis. Why? Because we haven't realized that only God can set us free. Then Peter transitions. Look at verses 10 and 11 of the text. Peter transitions uh, in verses 10 and, and 11. And he says this, it is so powerful. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Ooh. Peter writes these words that are so powerful. There are three takeaways from these verses, verses 10 and 11 that I want to share with you. Three powerful takeaways uh, from these verses that we want to share before this altar experience. Number one is that we serve a God of all grace, a God of grace. Uh, if it had not been for the grace of God, where would we be? Grace gave us a second chance. Grace kept our minds in peace. Uh, the old folk used to say, and I miss my mothers of Zion, because I would look over there, the mothers, the mother Bradley's mountains and others, comes to eight o'clock and says, uh, God would say he's a heart fixer and a mind regulator. It was the grace of God that kept you from losing your mind in the midst of what you were going through. You didn't know how you were going to make it. You didn't know how you would come out of this. But grace lifted you up. Grace provided you with a platform. Grace kept you up every day giving God the glory. It wasn't your skills, your intellect, your ability. We have too many egocentrical, uh, selfish people in this world today that think it is because their own doings that they have survived. They pat themselves on the back too often, not knowing if it had not been for God's grace. I'm here to tell you, the only reason I am still standing, you are still standing, is God's grace. The only reason you can lift your head is God's grace. It was grace and mercy that covered you. Woo! God covered you. And we'll talk about that a little bit more on Tuesday. But God's grace made a difference. But then look at verse number 10 is the second key takeaway from Peter's exhortation. First one is that it was grace, God's grace. Second one is this, our suffering, please listen to this, your suffering will not last forever. This too will pass. Better days are coming by and by your suffering will not last forever verse 10 says this after you have suffered a little while 
Ooh, God said, even in the midst of what you're going through, it's only a little while. It may seem to be a long time to you, three months, four months, five months. It may seem to be unbearable, but God says when you step back, it's only a little while. And after you have suffered a little while. In other words, one day this will be over. One day you will get what God has for you. And the question is this, when it's over, how will you be? When it's over, can you say, I felt like shouting, I felt like running, I felt like praising God like I've never praised God before. Think about it right where you are this morning. You've been through a whole lot. So the question is not, Lord, am I coming out of this? I answer that for you. Yes, you will. But the question is, how will you come out? Will you come out better, not bitter? Stronger, not weaker? In fact, if your enemy knew what adversity would do to you, they wouldn't even bring it your way. If the enemies of Joseph knew, the devil knew that Joseph would be greater, not weaker, perhaps Joseph never would have gone in that pit. God says, after you've gone through what you're going through, and here is the third and the final takeaway. First one is that God is a God of grace. Second one is our suffering will not last forever. But here's the third and the final takeaway. God will. <laughs> not Pastor Jackson, not any other pastor, not any other leader, not any political figure, but God will. Can I keep that on the board? God will. Not the governor, the president, not anybody who's perpetrating as they are somebody who can deliver you from what you're going through. Text says, God will restore us, <laughs> making us strong, firm, and steadfast. <laughs> when you come out of this, you're going to be stronger. You're going to be better. When you come out of this, God says, I'll do something like you've never seen before. When this is over. Ooh, somebody ought to praise God right where you are right now. When this is over, God says you're going to be restored. You're going to be stronger. I'll make you firm. I'll make you steadfast. I'll make your life as strong as what it has ever been before. It will end. It will end. Better days are coming. But will you be better when it's over? Ooh. Will you be able to say, Lord, I trust you? Ooh. Will you be able to say, Lord, I thank you? Ooh. I didn't ask for it. Ooh. Did not wish it upon myself. But I thank you for it. Because when I look back over my life, I can say if it had not been for this, perhaps I would not be where I am now. When this is over. Ooh, <laughs> mm. Not if it's over. Notice not one of the messages in the series dealt with the word if. All of them says when you go through, when you pray, when your back is against the wall, when you wait on the Lord, when you call upon the Lord. And so the seventh and final message simply says, when this is over. Song that worship team lead us into as we have this altar experience simply says, better days. Leandria Johnson writes this says sometimes it feels cold and you feel all alone Ooh. and I've got a word for somebody out there under the sound of my voice hold on 
better days are coming. It can be rough in this world. Woo. She writes and I quote, I know it ain't easy, but hang on in there. For I know better days of coming. You've seen good, you've seen bad, you've seen happy. Woo. Uh, you have seen sad. But just remember, my brothers and sisters, no matter where you are, I'm here to tell somebody, better days are coming. Come on and worship God. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, mm. it feels cold <laughs> and you feel all alone. Yeah, yeah. Sing it. Yeah, yeah. But hold on. Somebody hold on. coming. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, yeah. Come on, everybody worship with us this morning. It can be rough Ooh. in this world. Oh, oh you're singing that song. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. It ain't easy. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Just yeah, yeah. Hang on in there. Hang on. Ah, yeah. I know better days Ooh, uh, are coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. God, right? Lift better those days hands. Are coming. Better days yeah. are ah. coming. Woo. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Friends. Woo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, they will. Will yeah. leave you. Cause better days are coming. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh. Better days. Better days. Better days. I see it. Somebody right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But say focus yeah. and never lose sight. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know people, Ooh. people, they don't see the hurt you feel inside. Ooh. Oh, but just keep Cause everything will be alright. Lift those hands. Lift your voices wherever you are. Better. you have suffered <laughs> a little while <laughs> ah, somebody say a little while in your house at your table walking around uh, in your bedroom just shout a little while Woo. and after you have suffered a little while God himself will restore you and make you strong firm and steadfast 
to him be the power forever and ever in other words this too is going to pass when this is over (laughs) will you be able to say lord i thank you i'm not bitter i'm better (laughs) i'm not weaker i'm stronger my faith hasn't subsided my faith has increased god i'm a greater worshiper than what i was three months ago uh, I'm a greater praiser than what I was three months ago. God, I, I love you more now than I ever loved you before. Why better days? Come on, eyes wherever you are lift those hands there's a number on the screen 888-776-1238 amen pray with us amen call us somebody is there to pray with you right now I want you to know this in the midst of a crisis (laughs) we are not declaring better days have already come listen to the words of the song better days are coming this is a faith declaration it's easy to say it when it's already there when your finances have been restored when your health has been restored it's easy to say it then but on your way back (laughs) on your way back somebody ought to just text somebody say i'm on my way back amen i mean i haven't gotten there yet but i'm on my way back god will restore Restore to you the joy, the love, the peace. God's doing something great in your life. Listen, I told this wonderful lady that I was talking to the other day, a personal friend of mine. I said, you will love again. You will be happy again. I know it's sad right now. Your heart may be broken, but it's not over. It is not over until God says it's over. We've got to declare that this too will pass. If you don't know the Lord, perhaps the reason you can't declare it in faith is because you don't have a relationship with God. It takes a relationship with God in the midst of a crisis. Peter writes this to a persecuting church Peter writes this to a church that they've seen their members lose their life and he writes after you have suffered a little while God himself will restore you make you strong firm and steadfast if you don't know God you cannot declare that (laughs) you can't depend on somebody else's testimony it's just you and God Uh, call pick up the phone says I got to know God for myself I must have a relationship with God for myself let us pray with you and for you close those eyes Uh, if you can lift those hands in submission to God right now it's not over I don't care how bleak it looks and what you're going through when this is over God told me somebody is going to be better somebody will experience better days eternal father we thank you god we bless you we honor you this day thank you lord as we prepare to end this series you've reminded us that the last component of your stimulus package is a word from you that declares and after the suffering is over god will restore us strengthen us 
make us firm and steadfast we're coming back Lord <laughs> not only are we coming back we're coming back stronger than what we've ever been before we say thank you no weapon formed against us shall prosper Lord we thank you in advance for the renewed strength thank you for allowing us to maintain our faith now we pray for someone who perhaps are not quite there yet give them the strength the courage to hold on let someone lord get out of bed hold their head up and says i can make it because when this is over i refuse to be bitter i'm going to be better we thank you we praise you in advance in jesus name in jesus name amen amen come on and join in with the praise team and worship god for just a moment yeah yeah i, I see Let me say as they softly sing no matter what you're going through as we prepare for holy communion pastor mac is coming your better days are on his way <laughs> pastor jackson that's just some religious mumbo jumbo no it isn't I, I i i believe what i've spoken even for my own life and for your life your better days uh, on his way thank you for supporting this ministry uh thank you for trusting god by faith pastor mag will come on this first sunday in a brand new month and lead us into this virtual communion service amen god bless As we prepare to go into our Holy Communion virtually, we're going to ask right where you are in your homes, if you would get some juice and if you would get some bread and we're going to administer our Holy Communion, we're going to read our communion scripture, then we'll bless the bread and the wine and then we'll administer our communion. Our praise team will lead us into a selection after the reading of the scripture. Our scripture says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drank it unworthily, eateth and drank it damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Let us pray over our communion father we just thank you for allowing us to participate in this holy communion virtually one more time we thank you god for your body god that was bruised we thank you god for the blood that you shed on calvary because without the shedding of blood there will be no more remission of sins and we thank you for that in jesus name we pray amen our praise team is going to give us a selection right now
gives me strength from day. scripture says and on the same night in which he was betrayed he said take eat this is my body which has been broken for you this cup is the new testament in my blood which has been shed for as often as you do this you do it in remembrance of me let us all commune together Father, we just thank you for this holy communion. God, we thank you. So many that have taken it virtually. Now, God, we ask that you bless us. God, we ask that you dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. God, we ask that you give us peace as we go towards our destinations. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's children said amen. like to thank everyone for tuning in to our live broadcast. If you desire prayer, please call 1-888-776-1238. We want to hear from you. We'll be doing a survey to see how you feel about returning to in-person worship. Be on the lookout for an email or a phone call so you can share your feedback with us. There are many safe, secure, and easy ways to give to Bible Way Church of Atlas Road. Online giving is available to members and guests through my connections at bwcar.org. You can choose to give through your bank, checking, debit, or savings account, or via our mobile giving app by texting BWCAR along with your giving amount to 73256. You can mail your check to P.O. Box 90309, Columbia, South Carolina, 29290. Please do not mail cash. Financial donations will be accepted at the church on Tuesdays from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. If this service was a blessing to you, please share with your family and friends. For additional announcements and for more information, please be sure to visit our website at bwcar.org.